Oneness of God, the ultimate solution to the Trinitarian controversy part 3. The influence of Paul and the Pauline Church on the Trinitarian dogmas. Paul was a self-proclaimed apostle to the Gentiles. References yes to his life and personality were partly based on primary source, notably his letters, and partly on the account given by Luke in Acts. The primary nature of Paul's life account, history, in fact, aggravates the suspicion that he tailored everything to suit his motive, apparent lie implicit of getting to the top of Christ and power. Indeed, the very foundation of Christianity today emerged through the great influence of Paul. As the founder of today's Christianity, Paul testifies. According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. Corinthians 3.10 Michael Hart, an American mathematician, historian and publisher. In his ranking of the 100 most influential persons in his Tory places Paul, not Jesus Christ, as the second most influential person in history next only to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. See Michael Hart, The Top 100, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, New York, Hart Publishing Co., 1978. In his ranking, Hart clearly recognizes the fact that Paul was the real founder of today's Christianity. Paul surprisingly outranks Jesus in Hart's listing, because he wrote more books of the Bible than those of its other authors, whereas Jesus did not write a single word in it. Surprisingly enough, the so-called epistles of Paul to the Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, Timothy, Titus and to Philemon have virtually no reference to the true words uttered by Jesus, peace be upon him. Except for four repugnant verses, which were allegedly a tribute to Jesus, peace be upon him, virtually all of the more than 2,000 verses of the epistles of Paul are his own fabrications. Christians should know that Paul himself mentions his own gospel, not Jesus's, in his epistle to the Romans when he says, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. According to my gospel. Romans 2 verse 16. In fact, the Pauline epistle to the Romans serves as the foundation of today's Christianity, ironically. Martin Luther himself asserts that the Pauline epistle to the Romans is the most important document in the New Testament, the gospel in its purest form. See Lewis W. Spitz, ed. The Protestant Reformation, New Jersey, Prentice Hall, Inc., 1966, p. 36. Indeed, this is so strange and ironical, knowing that none of its more than 430 verses was ever formulated by Jesus. Paul should have made direct reference to the pristine teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, if only the former's claim for apostleship or divine inspiration was, indeed, true. Instead, large parts of his epistle's biblical quotations, notably those in the epistle to the Romans, were taken from the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, Psalms, Proverbs, Isaiah, Ezekiel and Hosea. His epistles were, indeed, a product of tedious efforts, but that does not make Paul far better than any of the other men who authored the Bible. It is worth noting that the Athanasian Creed, as mentioned Kalia, was never taught by Jesus, peace be upon him. In fact, the word Trinity or the Athanasian Creed itself is nowhere found in the Bible. Trinitarian dogma was merely deduced from 1 John 5 verse 7, which states, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father. The Word and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one inch. Christian scholars of the Bible later found that this dogma was an interpolation in the King James Version. In fact, no less than a group of 32 Christian scholars of highest eminence. Advised by a board of 50 representatives of various denominations came up in 1946 with a revised standard version of the New Testament and of the whole Bible in 1952. Discarding the foregoing passage. See the section, a hint about the references, reference now. 1. D. In a. Abdel Wahab Ali, The Christ as Seen in the Sources of the Christian Beliefs, Cairo, Wobber Bookshop, 1985. One of the major innovations of the Pauline Church is the blood atonement, other related innovations are the divinity of Jesus, the divine sonship of Jesus and the criminal sin. In his epistle to the Romans, Paul says, Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, Romans 5 verse 9. Other related biblical passages, wherein the Christian dogma of blood atonement or vicarious sacrifice is probably inferred from, are as follows. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Peter 1 18-19
Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. Corinthians 11:24. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Corinthians 11:25. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Corinthians 12, 9. The foregoing verses, indeed, contradict the key teaching of Jesus pertaining to salvation, which says, For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and fancies, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, verse 20. Christians, however, may always find ways to defend the Trinitarian heresy. They may, for instance, bank on Paul's baseless imagination concerning the role of Jesus Christ came, who is overall, the eternally blessed God. Romans 9 verse 5. This is, however, absurd. Knowing that there is no single, unequivocal statement in the Bible whereby Jesus himself declares, I am God, therefore, worship me instead, he said, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will but the will of my Father who sent me. John 5 verse 30 My Father is greater than I. John 14 verse 28 For I have not spoken of my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. John 12 verse 49 And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak, John 12 verse 50. These are just few of the verses which explicitly prove that Jesus, peace be upon him, claimed that he was sent by God. In this regard, a doctor of divinity and a noted Christian professor of church history. A. M. Rennick, himself emphasizes that the one who is sent is a messenger. A. M. Rennick. The Story of the Church, Bristol InterVarsity Press. 1977, p. 19. Paul's explicit confession that he separated to the gospel of God, Romans 11, should give Christians courage to doubt his self-made dogmas. Jesus and all the other prophets, peace be upon them all, taught the unity of God, as manifested, for instance, in Exodus 20 verse 2 5, Isaiah 44 verse 6, John 5 44, 17 colon 3. They had never taught Paul's innovations. So, any reverence to Paul is, purse, a rebellion against Jesus himself. Moreover, if Saul, the other name of Paul, had, indeed, heard in a vision, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Acts, 22 7. He obviously deserved this humiliating remark, because he had, in real life, severely persecuted the true followers of Jesus. Paul himself testifies. Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Acts, 26,9-11 For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Corinthians 15,9 Indeed, Paul was an avowed enemy both of Jesus and his followers. Normative value judgment, let alone the divine law of God, would disqualify Paul from being an apostle, bearing in mind his known criminal background. Particularly with respect to his persecution campaign against the real followers of Jesus. Ironically. His claim to apostleship brought him to prison in Caesarea, Rome, and during one of his trials, the then governor of Caesarea, Festus, said to him with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. Acts, 26 24. In fact, he was slain for championing the cause of his self-made Christianity. Paul's criminal records, indeed, deserved capital punishment. Other innovations by the Pauline Church include the adoption of the following, the Roman Sunday as the Christian Sabbath, the traditional birthday of the Sun God as the birthday of Jesus. The emblem of the Sun God, the Cross of Light, to be the emblem of Christianity. And the incorporation of all the ceremonies which were performed at the Sun God's birthday celebrations into their own rituals, Muhammad Atta Yur Rahim, Op. Sit, P. 99. 3C The Holy Qun, Nal, 16 1 21. The Holy Q.U.I. affirms the unity of God and refutes the doctrine of Trinity.
The Islamic concept of God is crystal clear, and it is purely of divine source, not human conjecture. Man, with all his senses, sees God's creation around him both animate and inanimate objects. These include the heavens and the earth, and all between them mankind, the sun, the moon, the stars, the rain, the mountains, animals, vegetables and all kinds of fruits, and many more. All these have the same patterns of creation, and are, therefore, clear signs that there is one and only true God Allah the Almighty and the Supreme Creator. He has asked us to meditate on those signs, so we would be able to realize that every creation has a definite purpose not accidental nor a mere idle sport. Allah says, And I did not create the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between as a plaything or in vain, but rather I created them to show my power. If I wanted to take a wife or child, I would have done so on my own part. But I did not do this as I am pure of this. But rather, I throw the truth I reveal to my messengers upon the faucet of the disbelievers, and it destroys it, and then their faucet goes and finishes. And for you, O you who say Allah ha taken a wife or son, is destruction, to your describing him with what is inappropriate for him. Qur'an, Anbiya, 21-16-18 Elsewhere in the Qur'an, Allah the Almighty likewise says, We did not create the heavens and the earth and we did not create everything between them in vain without any wisdom. We only created all of that with a true purpose. The hour will certainly come, so, O Messenger, ignore those who reject you and pardon them graciously. Your Lord, O Messenger, is the Creator and the Knower of everything. Qun, al Hijjah, 15 86. The only being that truly deserves to be worshipped is only one being who has no partner, and that is Allah. Those who deny the resurrection and the recompense, their hearts are arrogant and they do not fear the reckoning. They therefore do not believe that there will be any reckoning or retribution. They are arrogant and refuse to accept the truth. Qun, Nal, 1622. In order to satisfy further those with inquisitive minds, they should ponder over the following explicit accounts of the oneness of God, as stated in the Holy Qur'an. O people, your Allah is the true Allah, the one, unique in his essence and attributes. There is no other true God, and he is the merciful and his mercy is vast. He is compassionate with his creation, surrounding them with many blessings. Qur'an, Barqarah, 2 163 Allah is the one who alone deserves to be worshipped. He is the one who lives perfectly without any death or deficiency. He exists by himself and is not in need of any of his creation. The creation only exists through him and is always in need of him. Drowsiness or sleep does not come upon him due to the perfection of his life and existence. He alone controls the heavens and the earth. No one can intercede before him without his acceptance and permission. He knows what has happened in the past and what will happen in the future. The creation has no share in his knowledge unless he wills to grant them some of it. His throne covers the vastness of the heavens and the earth. It is not difficult for him to preserve the heaven and the earth. He is high in his essence and attributes and great in his dominion and authority. Qun, Bakara, 2 255. O people! Indeed, your true deity is one and has no partner, he is Allah. Qun, Safat, 37 4. Say, O Messenger, he is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except him. Say, he is all, who is, one. Alone, without another, indivisible with absolute and permanent unity and distinct from all else. The one and only true deity, unique in his essence, attributes and deeds. He is the master to whom belongs all sovereignty and perfect, beautiful qualities. The one to whom all creation turn to. All, the eternal refuge. He who is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient and sufficient to meet the needs of all creation. The one eternally and constantly required and sought, depended upon by all existence and to whom all matters will ultimately return. The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring, may he be glorified, nor any parent. He neither begets nor is born. Nor does he have any equal from his creation. Nor is there to him any equivalent. Qun, Iklas, 112,1-4 the foregoing verses are just some of the numerous Qur'anic injunctions which clearly manifest the oneness of God. 
but to rectify man's baseless conjectures, Allah the Almighty himself explicit lie brands those who adhere to Trinity and other strange polytheistic beliefs as blasphemers. As manifested in the following verse, the Christians who say that Allah is part of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, have committed disbelief. Allah is far above such a statement. Allah is not many, but he is only one God who has no partner. If they do not stop saying such things, a painful punishment will afflict them. Will these people not retract this statement, repent to Allah and ask his forgiveness for the idolatry they committed? Allah is forgiving towards the one who repents, whatever may have been the sin, even if it was disbelief. Allah is compassionate to the believers. Qur'an, Maida, 5 73-74 Allah the one and only true God, devoid of any partner. The one and only true God, Allah, has absolutely no partner. Indeed, he is self-sufficient. He does not need any associate. So one should not venture into believing that God shares his divinity with anyone. Indeed, this is a blasphemous belief, which will only pave the way, for someone who cherishes it, to hellfire. The full lowing Qur'anic verses elucidate the nature of Allah, being the one and only true God, who is absolutely devoid of any partner. He is Allah, the one whom there is no true deity except him, he is the knower of the absent and the present, nothing is hidden from him. The benevolent of the world and the afterlife and their merciful, his mercy encompasses the worlds, the master, the pure and sacred from every deficiency, the faultless from every defect. The corroborator of his messengers with manifest signs, the observer of the actions of his servants, the almighty whom no one can overpower. The omnipotent who controls everything through his power, the imperious. Pure and glorified is he from the idols and other things the idolaters ascribe to him. al hasha 22-23 Remember the day of rising when I will gather them all together, not leaving any one of them out, and criticize those who worshipped others besides Allah. Where are your partners that you used to claim were partners to Allah? After this test, they will have no excuse and they will declare themselves free of what they worshipped, by dishonestly saying, By Allah, our Lord, we did not associate partners with you in the world. But we had faith in you and we accepted your oneness. Look, O oh Muhammad, how these people lied about themselves by denying that they associated partners with Allah. The partners that they set up with Allah in this worldly life have disappeared and deserted them. Qur'an, Anam, 6 22-24 Allah has not taken a child as the disbelievers claim, nor is there any true deity alongside him. If there were to be any true deity alongside him, every deity would take his share of the creation he made and they would dominate one another, causing the order of the universe to become corrupt. The reality is that none of this has occurred, proving that the true deity is Allah alone. He is pure and holy of what the idolaters describe him with, namely partners and children which are unbefitting for him. He is knowing of everything hidden from his creation and knowing of everything which can be seen and perceived through the senses. None of this is hidden from him. Allah is above having a partner. Qur'an, Muminan, 23,90-92 He is the creator who created everything, the originator of things, the fashioner of his creations according to his wishes. For him may he be glorified are the most beautiful names which contain his lofty attributes. Everything in the heavens and on earth glorifies him from every deficiency. He is the Almighty whom no one can overpower, the wise in his creation, legislation and decree. Qur'an, Hasha, 59 colon 24. Any rational human being who sincerely acknowledges the unique attributes of Allah, which are absolutely divine and true to himself alone, will never associate anything with him. Allah, the one and only true God, is the sole living God of the universe. He is eternal, absolute, most compassionate, most gracious, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, most powerful and self-sufficient. He is the giver of life, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and all between them. He is the best disposer of affairs. He is most high, great. He is most forbearing and the best of planners. He is quick in retribution, but forgiving and merciful. He is exalted in power, wise, free of all wants and worthy of all praise. He is the Lord of the throne of honor. To him belong the end and the beginning. He is above teeny and space, hence, no vision can ever grasp him.